uh, opting to all the way, I think he said all the way back in February, he's been playing Decidueye GX with Vile Plume. Yeah, I believe he was the first player to really take this to a big finish at a tournament, did very well at a regional championships and followed it up with a second place finish at the St. Louis regional championships that we streamed uh, not too long ago. The you smiley face prize <laughs> regional. Yeah, the iconic three Rowlet in his prize cards. Uh, he is a former regional champion. He is a longtime competitor in the Pokemon TCG, always a threat to do well at these events. He's qualified for the world championships countless times, and it's he's here on the big stage once again. We'll see if he can get the job done and punch through for his first big international performance. Yeah, surely one of Kettler's strongest performances in many years, and he's hoping to show that, uh, hey, I'm maybe a veteran to this game, but I'm just as good as the new kids on the block. Uh, a great mix of new success and old meeting together. So we're looking at prize cards. I believe those are Igor. Oh, oh my goodness. What? Kettler, not again. Double Oddish? Oh my gosh. How First the three Rowlet, first, and now the two Oddish? Are you kidding me? Oh boy, can we see those notes? <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna see a sad face this time. Oh man, well, we'll see how it goes. That's uh, one of the big things. That's sort of the heart of his deck that makes it different than Igor's. Now it's just on paper, it looks like he's got a bad Igor deck. Um, less uh, speed cards to get the Decidua out immediately and less attacking options. We'll see how he handles it. All right, game number one is underway. Looks like Igor Costa going first. Get on social media, use the hashtag PlayPokemon. Tell us who you think is going to win this epic matchup. Will it be former world champion Igor Costa or the innovator of the Decidueye Vileplume deck, John Kettler? And so here we see Igor opening up with a level ball, finding out what his prizes are. This card is the heart of decks like these just because you have so many Pokemon both uh, your basic and your stage one that are under 90 hit points. Just makes it very easy to search for all of those cards and get them down as soon as possible. It also works, uh, he is actually grabbing the Alolan Vulpix, a big heart of his version of the deck. Yeah, this is a very interesting matchup that I honestly can't say I've seen played before. Both players using that Decidueye GX for the Feather Arrow ability, but both taking different routes for the kind of partner Pokemon. We have Vileplume for John Kettler, which has been his trademark and honestly the best deck for a few months in the standard format. Igor not playing Vileplume at all, instead playing Alolan Ninetales GX and also that Tapu Koko, uh, trying to spread as much damage around on the board as possible, supplementing it with Feather Arrow and swooping in for a big Miraculous Shine for Espeon EX at the end. This, uh, this could really go either way. I think a big deciding factor is going to be how quickly John can get Vileplume out. And in this game, yeah. he doesn't have Oddish. He's going to have to get a knockout first. He is opening with one of the more aggressive cards in his deck with that Lugia EX. I have seen him drop the uh, double, double colorless on it and use the second attack in order to grab knockouts. We'll have to see how quickly he's able to grab one there. In the meantime, we do see a setup over on Igor's side, drawing several cards. He's got plenty of items to play. He's probably operating under the assumption that a Vile Plume is coming in the next turn, so he's going to try and use as many of them as possible. Either way, probably serving his, to his advantage. Yeah, I'm interested to see the big interaction with Alolan Ninetales GX against this Decidueye deck from John's side. Um, Alolan Ninetales GX has the Ice Path GX attack. It allows you to move all of the damage counters from Alola Ninetales GX onto your opponent's Pokemon. And there's really nothing in John's deck that can knock it out in one attack. So it, there's going to be this weird cat and mouse game where John needs to do some amount of damage to Alola Ninetales GX, but not enough to be threatening because if he hits it for, say, 180 damage, well, then he can just Ice Path GX and move it on to that Lugia EX and knock it out while also healing his Alola Ninetales GX. So I think that's going to be a huge card in the matchup. It, he's definitely going to have to be smart with his Feather Arrows and sort of put it in a situation where maybe your opponent assumes you can't knock them out, but then you drop down a, a full Decidueye line the next turn and knock it out with surprise damage. Either that or you sort of just have to power through and accept one Ice Path and then work around it. Uh, we'll have to see what his strategy is. This is certainly an uncommon matchup. You don't see it often where it's one Decidueye variant versus another. Yeah, Igor so far has not been able to find that crucial Forest of Giant Plants stadium card, so he's unable to evolve any of his Rowlet into Dartrix thus far. And it looks like his hand is not very good to follow it up. 
going to have Ultra Ball perhaps going for another Shaman EX to continue his turn. But, I mean, from his eyes, you got to think, oh, Vileplume's coming. I need to get stuff out right now. Little does he know John doesn't have Vileplume. Yeah, I mean, he's playing the matchup just how he knows it can go. Uh, it's just going to be tough. We see a rescue stretcher. Igor immediately saying, uh, I'm going to throw back some of these Pokemon that I've discarded so far. Again, um, trying to burn his hand down so that he can shame in for as many cards as possible. But also just trying to uh, play his item cards while he believes that he won't have the opportunity to. Set up. Yeah, so see big setup for five, five cards. Yeah, we'll see if he finds Forest of Giant Plants off of that. If not, he won't be able to evolve any of his Pokemon, and that'll be the turn. He does have Choice Ban on that Tapu Koko, which is pretty big against Lugia EX, which does have a weakness to Lightning. And oh my goodness. <laughs> there it is, the big bird itself. Keller uh, not shying away from the Forest of Giant Plants at all, says, okay, I'll play it. There is a <laughs> weird situation where the first player to play it sort of opens it up for free for the other. But uh, Kettler, knowing I need to be as aggressive as possible, I need a prize pronto. Uh, he actually hasn't even been able to search his deck yet, so oh, he might yeah. not even am, know yet. I am waiting for the reaction when he searches his deck for the first time and does not find an Oddish. Uh, we had that same situation at the Madison Regional Championships where he searched his deck and here discovered that three Rowlet were in his prize cards, but here we go. Let's see if he can play it cool. Watch oh, how many times my. he fans through the cards. He's going to do it once casually. And then one more, like, uh, um, did I, did that really happen? Like, yep, just gonna grab Oddish so I can set up my Vile Plume and. Uh, oh, uh oh, here comes, here comes the notes. Oh, I wish we could see <laughs> it. I've gotta know. Oh, it's one gotta be pass. a sad face. Maybe a sad, slow pass. So, with no Oddish at his disposal, I believe there's also a Rowlet prized, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you gotta think, what do I go for? I, I guess you go for another Rowlet. Get it on the bench, try to get as many Decidueye GX. <laughs> they were trying. <laughs> Bless the cameraman for, for trying to uh, continue our sad story. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess, I, I think you want to go like Rowlet. Course. And the problem is, the either way, you're sort of telegraphing to your opponent what's up, I feel like. Uh, the only other thing I can think of, oh yeah, he's just, he's just writing um, actual, actual things that are prized. <laughs> No, no memes yet. <laughs> it is still the first round. So continuing to search with this Ultra Ball, and I have to assume we're either going to see Rowlet or something to continue his turn, like Shaman EX or Tapu Lele GX. But yeah, the dynamic of this matchup changes a lot once Shaman? Vileplume is out of the equation. Then it's almost like John has a weaker version of Igor's deck, where he still has a lot of the same tools. He still has Decidueye GX and... Uh, a lot of similar things, but he does not have things like Tapu Koko. He does not have Alola Ninetales GX, whereas Igor does, and that could make all the difference here. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be pretty brutal if he isn't able to get an early knockout and snag one of the Oddish. And uh, it's okay. kind of hard to get a knockout on Tapu Koko. It's pretty hardy, even just for a basic Pokemon uh, with no EX or GX designation. Here we see another setup. Yeah, they're fanning his cards out. Lots of items to play. Uh, perhaps could level ball start setting up for this next? Yeah, all things, all things considered, a pretty good start. He will be able to, well, he has one Decidueye GX in play. Could get another one, potentially, depending on what he finds off of Trainer's Mail. And he also has Tapu Lele GX in hand to play a supporter card, which he hasn't done yet. So we could even see Professor Sycamore, and he'll continue the turn. Yeah, it still has, uh, it looks like he has the double colorless energy in hand as well if he wants to attack. Either way, I know he wants to apply as much pressure as possible. I think at this point, Igor has kind of figured it out. Uh, after the second, well, after this level ball and no Oddish being found, I think Igor kind of has to know, uh, maybe they're prized. I mean, you're never really sure, but I don't know. I, I think something probably goes off on your head like, oh, something's up. There should be an Oddish on the board by now. So here we see a Lysander taken off of the trainer's mail. Um, could be helpful if he wants to get a cheap prize later on. Actually, he hasn't played a supporter yet. Uh, I don't know if there's any... He, yeah, he could take a knockout on one of these 60 HP Pokemon right here, and that could be pretty big. Yeah, uh, going after the Alolan Vulpix is huge. Uh, getting it before it has a chance to evolve into Alolan Ninetales GX. Uh, these Pokemon get so much bigger when they evolve, but they start off small, just 60 HP. 
So John making the correct uh, identification here, knowing that Alone the Nine Tails GX is going to be a problem for him. And, and oh, the Hottish remain. And so does the Rowlet. Yeah, and now the floodgates are open with Forest of Giant Plants in play. Igor already getting his Decidui GX. And this Tapu Koko with the Choice Band can actually flying flip for 100 damage thanks to Choice Band plus weakness. So it'll just be a couple of feather arrows. Uh, and, you know, one flying flip sets it up, and then you get, what, four feather arrows over the course of a couple turns, and that Lugia EX is going down right away. Yeah, that is one brutal thing for Lugia versus uh, playing something like the Tapu Lele here in the active position at the beginning. Weakness adds up, especially against spread decks like this. Definitely. Um, if it were just, if it were Tapu Lele GX instead, it would be taking 50, not 100. It wouldn't be very close to a knockout at all, but... That's now what's happening here. So over on Igor's end, I think we just saw a Sycamore getting seven new cards to play. He realizes, well, I'm okay throwing away supporters because I have access to Versus Seeker for a long time now. Let's get as many Decidueye as I can and start piling on the damage, showing what my deck does best. Yeah, Igor is unable to get a second Decidueye GX in play, which is going to be probably frustrating for him. It'll make it so he can't quite set up Lugia EX to be knocked out with Feather Arrows. If he could have gotten two Decidueye GX down, you put four damage counters on Lugia EX, and then you flying flip for 100, and then on the following turn, you do the double Feather Arrow again to Lugia EX. But now he can only place two damage counters, so he doesn't really have that option. So here we do see the flying flip for... Feather Arrow first. Oh, sorry, just, just a Feather Arrow. Now the flying flip. Yeah. Yeah. He could still set up for like a Sky Return knockout on the next turn with his Shaman EX. And uh, who knows, there's even a chance that Tapu Koko won't be knocked out. Uh, it's only 80 damage now from Arrow Ball. If John can get just one more energy, he can Feather Arrow plus Arrow Ball for 100 and get the knockout. But it's honestly a pretty annoying Pokemon to deal with. You have to commit a lot just to take down this one prize attacker, because if you don't, the damage is going to keep flying around. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder, uh, maybe even a deep hurricane is what you have to do just to get rid of this thing. I don't know if he has the other energy commitment to do it, but uh, here comes an Ultra Ball. Uh, I think he's certainly going to knock it out. He Ultra Balls away, Dark Tricks, and Decidueye yeah, uh, GX. So. He, he could be evolving right now. Uh, grabbing Vile Plume? Oh, he's yeah. got to have a Revitalizer to combine with this. Yeah, he's got a Revitalizer, get back the Dark Tricks and Decidueye, evolve, and then play the Sycamore. Makes sense. And uh, I see... Just grabs the Vile Plume out of his deck, says, hey, uh, I'm not getting it out anytime soon. Let's consider it dead weight in the deck. Yep. Sort of like the Talon Flames after the first turn in uh, Greninja, and let's put it out of its misery for now. Yeah, that's a sign of a great player, being able to adapt when things don't go your way. Uh, a lot of players would be frustrated in John's situation and say, ugh, I don't know what to do anymore. My strategy isn't working, and the prize cards have ruined me. But John is saying, all right. Well, I've identified that this is a problem. I'll do How do I go about this game now? And he's going to figure out the best way he can to, to navigate through this game. Yeah, it's possible. Um, if it, you didn't have the extra time here in top eight that he might consider scooping earlier, but yeah, he's actually, got a little more time to burn. He's I got mean, the first double Decidueye. Might as well try and play it out. Yeah, I think John's actually winning this game so far. He has the advantage on board. He has two Decidueye GX out first. Sure, he doesn't have Vile Plume, but I don't think that's a big deal. He's going to take his second prize card here. There's plenty of easy Shaman EX on the board to knock out later. I don't, I don't really think he's in trouble at all. He might be, you know, kind of an energy in this game so far. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty awkward. I think those Shaman are actually going to spell the end of the game for one player or the other. Who knocks them out first for easy two prizes to close a game out? Or who can Sky Return and remove them? And takes another prize, but misses Oddish once again. Uh, John missed an energy attachment that turn as well, which is going to end up being a big deal, I think. He would have liked to be able to set up for a Razor Leaf on the following turn with his Decidueye GX, but no energy, just has to arrow ball, and now Igor can perhaps take a lead here. Igor, it looks like he's got another Rowlet and Dartrix down. So he's got everything but the Decidueye. Can't find the biggest bird. And actually... Uh, Looks like N is his only supporter, so it could actually help Kettler find the energy they was missing. Igor also needs an energy here pretty badly. Yeah, he needs to find double colorless energy to sky return 
for the knockout here. Otherwise, his Shaman EX is going to be in some danger. Yeah, that would backfire terribly if so. Let's see if he can hit it. So Igor getting six cards, John only getting four. Does he find double colorless energy off of these six cards? He's already used two. So here we go. And oh. he does. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, takes that Shaman off the board. Great combination with Feather Arrow here. That was really huge. It's good to be Igor Costa. It is good to be Igor Costa. <laughs> so there's the Feather Arrow damage. Oh, he's going to Field Blower his own Forest of Giant Plants, just in case John finally got Oddish out of the prize cards. I was to say, nope, I'm not letting you get that Vile Plume out. Yeah, why not? And down goes Lugia, and that's going to be a two-prize knockout for Igor. So there's an awkward decision on which Pokemon to promote. Igor is going to go with the Shaman EX, and he'll take two prize cards here. Got a Decidueye GX, and I didn't catch the other card. But we're now even on prizes. John still has the advantage on the board, I think, two Decidueye GX versus one. But it could swing at any moment if Igor were able to, you know, evolve those two Dartrix into two more Decidueye GX. So still anybody's game. There's lots of math and little decisions going on here. And it's not clear who's really winning. Uh, and Kettler finds the energy that he desperately wanted last turn. I think if he was able to uh, raise relief this turn, he'd be in a much better situation. Igor certainly wouldn't be able to promote the Shaman the way he is now, uh, trying to let them all escape with Sky Returns. And we see yet another N. This time, the Judge variant for both players get four cards. Yeah, this is going to be a strong turn for Kettler being able to N Igor down to four cards, and he'll probably wrap it up with the Hollow Hunt GX attack, getting three cards out of his discard pile into his hand and setting him up for future turns. Whereas Igor really is not in a good spot. He doesn't have any energy in play. Uh, he has no Alolan Ninetales GX because the Vulpix got knocked out early on. And it's just going to be tough for him to piece together a plan to win the game, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to come down to, like you said, if he could get a double uh, Decidueye on his turn, then he sort of swings in favor of the uh, damage that's coming out per turn from non-attacks. He is going to be able to, or at least trying to be able to, get both of his Shaman off of the field. So then maybe in the late game, he gets the Razor Leaf attacks where he's knocking out Kettler Shaman. And uh, it looks like he's going on the Hollow Hunt right now. It's his GX attack, three cards from his discard pile back into his hand. GX marker has been flipped. The powerful GX attack being used right here. Get to recover any three cards from the discard pile and put them back into his hand. Looks like John is just trying to figure out what's my best route for winning this game in the next few turns. Lysander is certainly going to be a part of that puzzle. He's already softened up Tapu Lele GX on the bench with those feather arrow abilities. But uh, how is he going to get those two prize cards beyond that knockout? Yeah, I'm uh, surprised. I guess he's grabbing Sycamore, saying, well, I am going to need a way to get more resources after I do my Lysander turn. And of course, Double Colorless being an obvious choice that he can actually use Razor's Leaf next turn. Yeah, Igor gets the N off of Trainer's Mail, so he'll be able to disrupt John's Hollow Hunt. And oh, we see the Espeon EX. That yeah. is the wild card in I, this matchup. I remember that he discarded it, but he put it back into the deck with Rescue Stretcher early on. Yeah, so if Igor can... Get enough damage on all of those Decidueye GX. You can use Miraculous Shine to devolve them. And as long as there's enough damage to knock out Dartrix, yes, Dartrix he'll get uh, some knockouts. 80 or 90 hit points? Uh, it's 80. Okay, so uh, even easier. And that nice even number actually lines up very well with Feather Arrows. Yeah, I think he needs to get a Decidueye GX number two on board, though. Still none after, uh, after that draw. And I don't think I see any post supporter either. Well, it looks like he's going to be the one hunting this turn. Wow. Uh, does he have the grass energy to do so? Yeah, I think he has one in hand. He's eyeing up what three cards he would like to get back with this Hollow Hunt GX attack. I don't know. Igor is in an awkward situation. Now he's put the, he's kind of exposed the X Espeon EX. It's great as a surprise where you slam it down, put an energy on it, miraculous shine. But it could meet a similar fate to the Tapu Lele GX where it starts to get targeted down by those Feather Arrow and perhaps it gets knocked out before it gets a chance to work its magic. And there's also a weird situation here where uh, Shaman EX also remains in play. So Kettler could take that as a two prize knockout as well on his next turn. He has all the pieces to do so. Lysander and Double Colorless. Another level ball fails for Igor just playing it so he doesn't draw it 
off of an impending end that he assumes could come here for John after he uses his own GX attack, and we'll see what cards he gets back with his Hollow Hunt. On the Hunt, I can only imagine. I think there's a Decidueye in there. Ways to get his Decidueye, <laughs> double colorless. Not even, uh, doesn't even look like he's actually going for Decidueye right away. Uh, opting for Floatstone, okay. Thanks. Sycamore, Sycamore, and uh, double colorless energy. And so we jump back over to Kettler's side. A level ball. Um, is there a Rowlet still in the deck now? I don't can't remember if he's pulled the one from the prizes. There should be yeah. one left. Yeah, it looks oh, like two. The, the two are around. So Keller could even try and push forward to get his third Decidueye before Igor even gets his second. Yeah, there's no Forest of Giant Plants in play, so he would have to wait unless he had another Stadium card in hand. Uh, both players have been good about field blowering away the Stadium card to not give an give their opponent the chance to use it. But uh, they also both play four copies of Forest of Giant Plants, so they could very easily draw one when they need one. So we at the very least see Rallet in hand, another trainer's mail from Kettler. It is pretty funny seeing him play so many item cards. I'm used to the game being locked up by now for the matches of his that we've been able to cast. Yeah, we'll see if he finds anything relevant off of this trainer's mail to give him a chance in this matchup to uh, maybe take a lead trying to figure out what is his best course of action to take those remaining four prize cards. I think he's put a clear target on the Tapu Lele GX on the bench. Two more Feather Arrows, puts it with 90 HP remaining, so just a simple Lysander Razor Leaf would knock it out. That's one knockout, but how are you getting the other, the other knockout? There is the Shaman EX on the bench. That could be an easy target for the same kind of play where you Feather Arrow damage onto it, then finish it off with a Razor Leaf. Uh, that seems like the easiest plan to me right now. Yeah, the thing about Shaman is that at any point it could potentially disappear by jumping back into Igor's hand. That said, the Tabulele uh, could also attack if you leave it there. Uh, both of them seem like pretty nice targets right now, though. Yeah, it looks like John does have double colorless energy. will be able to use Razor Leaf this turn if he wants, but does he have the Lysander to go with it, or will he have to simply attack into the active Decidueye GX, or, or he just has a Floatstone? I thought he pulled it up as one of his Hollow Hunt targets. Instead, uh... He did get End. Oh, you're right, at the end of all of that. So it's in the deck, but not in his hand. Um, and he's actually opting to sort of steal a page from Igor's book, putting the double colorless energy on his Shaman uh, EX, just trying to bounce it back to his hand and remove those easy prize targets from his opponent. Yeah, important to note, when John used Hollow Hunt GX, Igor had an end to disrupt him. When Igor used Hollow Hunt GX, John played Professor Sycamore. So Igor is going to have all of those cards he just got back with that Hollow Hunt GX attack, and basically he'll be able to do whatever he wants on the following turn, whatever plan he has in mind. Yeah, that's definitely going to be hard to deal with. One thing in John's favor, though, is we see an Ultra Ball, and after that Revitalizer, I think we are going to see Decidueye number three. Yeah, still no Forest of Giant Plants, though, so unless he has it in hand, he won't be able to evolve that Rowlet. Let's see, he does grab the Dartrix, so he at least has the pieces. So I have to wait and see if the Forest of Giant Plants comes into play. Uh, if it does, we're certainly going to see another Decidueye GX in... More damage counters. There it yeah, is. Yeah, there it is. Being boom, boom. thrown around by those Feather Arrow abilities. Now he gets to put six damage counters wherever he wants every single turn. So we receive retreating to the Shaman. Just a simple Sky Return getting those prizes off. It also ensures that you have a double colorless hand, a double colorless in hand as long as your opponent does not play an end. Yeah, I wonder where these Feather Arrows are going to go. Uh, he's going to Sky Return attacking the active for 30 damage. If he puts all six on the active, it puts it at 110, which leaves it with 130 HP. It sets up for maybe a Razor Leaf knockout, but I wonder if it's better to just target down some of those bench Pokemon that are a little easier to knock out later. Yeah, it's a weird situation. Um, I kind of like putting them on the active eventually just because you know Igor will... Oh, and he actually puts all six on the Espeon. So sort of uh, picking his two targets there. Yeah, I mean, that is that is public enemy number one if you're John Kettler. Uh, you don't want to see all of your Decidueye GX get devolved and knocked out. That is a painful way to go. 
Yeah, it only takes uh, eight damage counters on any of the Decidui for them to be bounced up and turned into a knockout. So Force of Giant Plant's still down. Not super relevant since Igor has the two Dark Tricks. Igor has everything that he grabbed in the Hollow Hunt. I know he grabbed the Float Stone and the Double Colorless Energy. What is he going to do with them? Looks like he's putting energy onto Espeon EX. Uh, I wonder if he's going to try to just knock out the Decidui GX that has the energy on it already. That is it, one way to go about it. Just get one off the board. It prevents a returning Razor Leaf. But I wonder uh, if Keller's able to get like a double colorless energy and energy drive back. Uh, wouldn't that be enough in combination with Feather Arrows to at least knock out the Espeon in return? Yeah, I think Igor's just trying to lessen how many damage counters he gets to take every turn from those Feather Arrow abilities. I think if... Um, if John just gets six every turn, he's just going to outrace Igor. So I think Igor's trying to even the playing field here and use this miraculous shine. He only gets one prize card for the knockout since right. it's Dartrix being knocked out. But maybe it could throw a wrench in John's plans. And it actually technically does devolve all of them, even though uh, the other ones that aren't knocked out, he can just play back down if he wants to. Yep. Can't imagine why he wouldn't. But yeah, here we see Double Colorless. It's an energy drive. Returning are these Decidueye that didn't have as many damage counters on them. So Kettler looks like he's going to be able to attack his way into a one prize left to win situation. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how Igor is going to take his last three prizes. He doesn't have an easy knockout with Feather Arrows currently. Um, it, kind of the same situation as John was in. He could get one knockout fairly easily, but the other one is going to elude him. The Shaman EX being the easy one, but then where do you go from there? Um, yeah, I guess the Lele, just because it has slightly less HP than the Decidueye, but I don't know if you'll be able to get there in time. Yeah, this is going to be tough. If he has Lysander in hand, he can go after Shaman EX and a Feather Arrow a couple times onto Tapu Lele GX to set it up for the Razor Leaf on the following turn, but this is not a great situation to be in. Yeah, and Igor is sort of realizing, like, wow, I could uh, actually end up throwing this away, almost opting to drop the double colorless onto the Shaman, just trying to pick it back up into his hand. Also, only two cards left in his deck. Oh, so wow. He's we... on a clock. Uh, he, also, he only has two more turns to really win the game. I'm actually not sure if he can do it either. We'll have to see what he can pull out. I feel like that situation that you were mentioning earlier with the Lysander is necessary. Yeah, he's eyeing up a Sky Return play. He can Feather Arrow to uh, four damage counters onto Top of Lele GX and Sky Return, then promote one of his Decidui, or the Decidui GX with no damage counters on it. He'll return the Float Stone to his hand so he can give it free retreat on the next turn, and then he can Razor Leaf and knock out Tapu Lele GX. It looks like this is what Igor is considering, or he could just go right in for the Razor Leaf. Oh boy, well, the double's committed. We know what he's doing. Combined with an end, just hoping that you can raise the leaf and uh, keep Kettler down. Yeah, something else I didn't consider. He can... All right, so this turn, four damage counters on top of Lele GX. You raise the leaf for 90. Next turn, you put the four damage counters on top of Lele GX, and it knocks out Tapu Lele. And then you just need Lysander to target down Shaman EX with Razor Leaf for the win. Yeah, trying to set up like an almost knockout on this turn. And I think he got the... Oh, for a second, I thought he had the third Decidueye. It was not. <laughs> Uh, that would certainly make the math a lot easier for him as well. Yeah, so, oh, actually putting the damage counters onto Shaman EX. That's another way to go about it, too. You uh, Razor Leaf for 90. Oh, he's just going to pass, leaving Shaman EX active. Wow. Uh, and Kettler immediately playing a Sycamore. Oh, wow. First card oh. is the game winner. <laughs> wow. Double colorless energy combined with the two feather arrows is enough to knock out that little Shaman I, EX. I can't believe you left the Shaman active, but that does it. No Vile Plume, no problem. Yeah. That's it. That's game number one. John Kettler, even with two Oddish prized, even going second in this matchup, he didn't even get to go first, takes a, a convincing game number one where you got to wonder if things actually do go his way. Yeah, how, how much How's this gonna look? is it going to be? It almost makes me start to wonder if uh, Kettler has experience playing the multiple versions of Decidueye uh, against him. One thing I can say for Kettler, I'm sure he has tested other decks, but he's played this one deck nearly consistently uh, throughout all of his tournaments. Yep. 
And one thing, one huge benefit that you get when you play just one deck is you don't have to worry about splitting up your testing time. You can spend it all dedicated to sort of perfecting your craft. Yeah, and his deck list is barely changed, too. I mean, since still has the Lugia in it. Yeah, it's... most players have removed Lugia EX completely because it's mostly replaced by Tapu Lele GX. You don't have the deep hurricane attack, but it's essentially the same thing. But otherwise, very few changes. I see one big one is adding Olympia, which now that you have Tapu Lele GX to search for, it becomes a much more viable option. But uh, otherwise, the only new card is Field Blower, and that's it. Otherwise, his deck is completely the same as it was four months ago. And it's pretty funny how uh, a lot of players, they sort of left this original core of the Decidueye Vileplume deck as soon as Garbodor, Gabor, blah, 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 Garb Odor got popular. Um, they just felt like, you know, it, I don't know, you got to play a lot of items to start <laughs> activating it. Uh, okay, those look like <laughs> prizes where Vileplume could actually come out this game at the very least. I think every single game we've had John Kettler on stream, he has had at least one Rowlet in his prize cards. It is just inevitable. <laughs> I guess it uh, just really loves hiding from him. <laughs> Here we see the um, uh, almost immediate Force Giant plants. Igor started debating, uh, do I want to open this can of worms for my opponent? I don't think so. Yeah, I think you wait for your opponent to see if they play it. And then uh, if they can't, then oh, I, I guess... The only I could see an argument for it if you're trying to like burn through as many item cards as possible here. Yeah. That said, you've got full picks as well uh, to follow up, so you'll be able to get a lot of Pokemon in your hand over time without the use of items. Yeah, one big thing in game number one, Alolan Vulpix got knocked out on the first turn, and that is a big part of Igor's strategy in this matchup. Getting Alolan Ninetales GX, that is potentially more important than Vileplume would be for John. And the first one got knocked out. The second one was actually in his prize card. So he was never able to get Alola Ninetales GX into play. I wonder how different this will look if he's able to do it this game. I wonder what hurts more. Uh, Kettler's deck when you don't have the Vile Plume, or Igor's deck when you don't have the Vulpix and Ninetales. Yeah, essentially last game we saw both players playing a straight Decidueye deck with none of their backup cards. And uh, in that case... John was the one who got more Decidueye GX into play, and well, he was the one who ended up winning. Yeah, uh, even though he doesn't run as much of a turbo build as Igor's does, I guess they have very similar trainers, but in general, he doesn't run as many items. Um, he was able to get the, uh, the Decidueye out first, and that could be a big deal. Yeah, Igor taking this first search through the deck to figure out which of his Pokemon are in his prize cards, seeing if there's anything devastating like what happened to John in the first game. And I don't think anything too relevant is in his prize cards this game. Oh, actually, Ultra Ball's away, the Espeon EX. But uh, trying to set up as much as possible because he knows Vileplume is a very real possibility from his opponent's side. So you want to play those item cards before you can't anymore. It's actually uh, reminding me a bit of his first game. Did something similar. Threw away the Espeon EX right away and then had a way to throw it back into his deck. You're opting to do the same. Wants to draw as many cards as possible when he has the opportunity to use Shaman's setup. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to play Forest Giant Plants. Decides, you know what? Let's do this. Yeah, there's a weird thing going on with Forest Giant Plants. Where, oh, he's going to get turn one Decidueye. All right, that's a pretty big turn one. Uh, there's a weird thing going on where, yeah, you don't want to give Forest Giant Plants to your opponent because if they didn't have one, you're now allowing them to get those grass evolutions into play on the first turn, but let's say they're trying to use Shaman EX and set up for more cards, and they have a Forest of Giant Plants in their hand, that's one fewer card they could draw, so it can kind of go either way. And he actually does the sneaky play where he field blowers <laughs> his own at the very end of everything. All right, well, John has John anyway. Says, well, I run four of these, too. Yeah, so this could be a situation where being able to actually play Forest of Giant Plants from his hand will give him an extra card from a Shaman EX setup, so... That's where you don't really know which one's better. Um, I think Igor made the safer play, forced John to have Forced of Giant Plants, because if he didn't, Igor would just have Decidueye GX out. He would have a big advantage, but John did have it, and uh, I think we're going to see a fairly lengthy turn from him as he tries to establish his board on the first turn. Yeah, this is what his deck is all about. The difference is instead of focusing on just one evolution, he's got another one that he's got his eyes on. So first level ball, 
John will now take his time to search through his deck and see if anything important is in his prize cards. He will note one Rowlet is in there once again. He just never has four Rowlet in his deck. It's impossible. <laughs> I, I don't know why. <laughs> just seem to be uh, magnetically targeting our prize cam technology. Yeah, that must be it. That's exactly it. That's the true science behind it. <laughs> However, uh, he actually does have what I would say are considerably better prizes than usual <laughs> on the Kettler standard. Yeah, it looks like he's opting to go for dart tricks. He might already have Rowlet in hand, so he can evolve up to dart tricks right away thanks to the Forest of Giant Plants and perhaps get his own Decidueye GX into play. We'll see how many of those he can get out and if he can get that devastating Vile Plume into play. So here we see Rowlet down. There's dart tricks. There's Decidueye. Anything you can do, I can do. As good. The same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so if you can get a second one, then we can say the original line. Or a Vile Plume. And uh, that's going to be the big thing he's hoping for off of this N, is things like Ultra Ball. That way you can ditch your hand low, uh, get the evolution pieces that you need, and then Shaman to set up. Yeah, if you could get a second Decidueye GX into play right here, it would be huge. Uh, otherwise, Vile Plume is probably... Another thing you want. Well, let's see a Rowlet in hand. And a Trainer's Mail. More ways to burn through the deck. Trainer's Mail into Ultra Ball. That's probably one of the number one cards he wants to see at this stage in the game. Yeah, this turn will be extended, I think. Typically when we see Ultra Ball, we, we see a Shaman EX that follows for additional cards with that setup ability. So here we see Rowlet down. Double colorless to the active, deciding, hey, uh, I'm going to Sky Return this back into my hand. It's great for more than one reason. The only thing it doesn't do is it means you can't do something like a Razor Leaf in the following turn. Yeah. Here we see. I see John doing this a lot where he uh, uses Shaman EX pretty frequently. He, it gets a little bit of damage, it gets it off your board, and it allows you to use Setup again on the following turn. Uh, but it mainly clears up bench space so that he can fill it up with more Rowlet and Oddish. That makes sense. Uh, when I've played through this deck, that can be one of the more frustrating things. You have cards that you want to play, like Tapu Lele, and you want to play the Shaman, but you also want to have as many uh, Decidueye as possible, and you also need to dedicate space to a Vile Plume. It gets crowded. So we do see Shaman EX coming down, drawing perhaps five or even six cards off of this setup ability, if he can play the last card down, and Another yeah. Rowlet, and here we go, setup. Still have yet to see an Oddish, buddy. We are going to see six additional cards here. Yeah, after the last game, maybe he was like, eh, who needs Vile Plume? I'll just win anyway. Yeah, it seemed to work last time. He didn't have to deal, oh, wow, uh, ditching an Oddish right here off the Ultra Ball. I don't know if he has another piece of it in his hand or not. Um, he didn't have to deal with the Nine Tails last time, but if you can beat your opponent to a uh, Decidueye race, that's very good. Opting to grab Dartrix here. Yeah, if he can get the second Decidueye GX into play this turn, he could... Feather Arrow twice and to the active, does. and Sky Return that Alolan Vulpix for the knockout. Uh, I don't know if that's something I would do. It doesn't have any energy on it, so it's not super threatening. But uh, if you want to take a prize early on and uh, get a potential okay. Alolan Ninetales GX off the board, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, uh, just one way to be aggressive, maybe deciding. It would be very difficult to deal with two Alolan Vulpix, or two Alolan Ninetales, but maybe I can get through just one of them. It looks like he's going to go after the benched one, which I, uh, I can get behind this plan. Go after the thing that has the energy. Yeah, and this also puts a weird position for Igor. If he wants to start attacking with Alolan Vulpix, he's either going to need something like a Float Stone, or he's going to have to dedicate an energy to the active. And there's a lot of damage counter being spread around the field. So Igor going to take N off of this Trainer's Mail. Not going to play it quite yet. I think he has plenty of cards in his hand he can still play. Can he get the Alolan Ninetales GX up and running? That big 210 HP Pokemon with the threatening Ice Path GX attack. And it can also use Ice Blade to start spreading some damage around. For example, if he got it online this turn, he could put two damage counters on the bench, Rowlet, and then knock it out with Ice Blade. Take a prize, take a potential Decidueye GX off the board. Could be a pretty big play. So here we see Ultra Ball. Uh, trying to figure out what other resource, actually discarding a Grass Energy. He does not run very many energy total, only seven. So I think he's fully committed to this Ninetale strategy. Actually eyeing up another Rowlet, just 
maybe feeling a little intimidated by the fact that Kettler already has two decidui <laughs> yeah. trying to keep up in the race. We saw what happened when he lost that race last time. Yeah, it did not end very well. It looks like he has dark tricks in hand already, which explains going after the Rowlet. Uh, I think he's trying to figure out, do I want Tapu Koko in this matchup? You think he uses it against most decks, but is it effective against this matchup? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I think it's good if you're able to set up like a huge multi-knockout turn with Espeon EX. But uh, otherwise, if you're not hitting for that weakness damage on Lugia, uh, it's not quite as strong. So here we go, and N going to be shuffling both players in. Kettler actually not taking a prize on the last turn, just dropping some threatening damage counters. So he's going to be able to get a full six cards as well. So Igor does find the Alolan Ninetales GX, gets to evolve the Vulpix on the bench. And it looks like he is going to go after the Rowlet on the bench and target it with Ice Blade this turn. Uh, this is going to be tough for John to deal with. It just has an awkward amount of HP for a Decidueye deck to really push through. 210 is a lot, and you can't just kind of chip away at it because then it can use Ice Path GX and move all the damage back onto your side. So it's a very, very difficult Pokemon to deal with when you can't do big chunks of damage. Yeah, it's weird. You almost have to ignore it, even though it doesn't seem super optimal to do so. Uh, I feel like if they get a nice hearty Ice Path on you, you sort of just lose because it undoes so much of your work at once. Yeah, the worst is something like... There's 120 damage on a Lola Ninetales GX, and you're like, all right, I'm close to a Razor Leaf knockout. And then they Lysander out your Shaman EX and Ice Path fully heals their Lola Ninetales your Shaman. That's and get two prizes. Yeah. It happens a lot, too. Here we see the Revitalizer opting to grab another Rowlet down as well as the Oddish. Yeah, and will we finally see Vileplume enter the fray? So far, we have not seen it. Uh, oh, double colorless energy hitting the discard pile. Uh, that makes me think John will go for the Hollow Hunt GX on this turn. But do we finally see that irritating pollen lock come into effect? Yeah, ideally, you want to get it in combination with a floatstone. Without it, uh, you can put yourself in a really frustrating situation where your opponent pulls up your vile plume with Lysander, but then you just hit around it because you can spread. Yeah, he's actually opting to discard Floatstone and Vileplume with his Ultra Ball. So perhaps wanting to wait one more turn to use item cards, wants to use Hollow Hunt GX first to recover some resources, or he could just have another Vileplume in hand. Well, he does have three Decidueye in here now, uh, back but stronger. You'd think after knocking out one of the Rowlet, he'd be sort of safe in this race, and no boy, uh, there's at least one onto the Ninetales. I wonder if Igor is trying to set up a situation where it's like, well, you kind of have to Ice Path now, otherwise I'm going to follow it up with 150 damage in the next turn. Oh, that's kind of the situation he's in now with three Decidueye GX on board. Yeah, there's 150 HP on Alola Ninetales GX. That's three Feather Arrows plus a Razor Leaf. So, yeah, John seems to be navigating this perfectly. That's about as good as you can have it. Uh, if you have a board this good, you sort of make it so that your opponent has to do a weak Ice Path. Uh, 60 damage, that's barely better than Ninetales' regular attack. And then you don't have to worry about it again for the rest of the game. Yeah, so I wonder how Igor will respond. If he gets one more Decidueye GX into play, he can Feather Arrow the Gloom twice and then Ice Blade for a knockout. But I got to think long term, that's not a winning play. You need to start going after... Two prize Pokemon. You need to go after Decidueye GX or Shaman EX. Otherwise, I think you're just going to fall behind as the game progresses. So in Igor's end, we see Decidueye number two and an N. He also got a double colorless energy down on his Dark Trick, so, or so on his Decidueye, so he has a lot more energy in play than Kettler does. Yeah, and this will be a big decision. Does he go for the Ice Path GX on this turn? It will make it so that he can't use Hollow Hunt GX later, which has proven to be pretty valuable in this matchup, but perhaps saving his Alola Ninetales GX for one more turn could be a better option. And I wasn't able to see what Kettler got, but this is once again another situation where he was able to Hollow Hunt and then immediately got his uh, resources end away. We see Rescue Scratcher coming out as the target of this trainer's mail for Igor. He could do something similar to last time, putting the Espeon back into the deck one way or another. And looks like he's opting to put it straight back into his hand. All right, so maybe this is going to be the plan for Igor this game. Start to spread enough damage with Ice Blade and Flying Flip and Feather Arrow 
to set up that big Espeon EX play where he can perhaps knock out all three Decidui GX at once. Well, technically knocking out the Dartrix, but taking away all three Decidui GX at once and leaving John helpless. Yeah, that's kind of how I saw this matchup playing out in the first place. I do think uh, it's a little hindered. Like, that strategy is difficult when you can't play mm -hmm. items, but Kettler hasn't actually gotten a single Vile Plume out during this entire matchup. Wow, big choice man there. Now the Ice Blade doing 80. So now the active Dartrix is in range for Espeon EX. The benched one with a couple Feather Arrows also in range, so we could see two Decidueye GX go down next turn to the Miraculous Shine from Espeon EX. It's definitely going to be tough. You're going to go from three Decidueye down to one. But I feel like if you're Kettler, you almost have to try and deal with this Nine Tails. Yep, he's going to put all the Feather Arrows onto it. And now it's right in knockout range from a Razor Leaf. But I think Igor's got a pretty hot turn cooking up. Yeah, John could prevent this with a couple different things. He has Olympia in hand to heal some damage, but nothing to really retreat after he has to do the switch. So this could be the big turn. Can Igor get Espeon EX in play? And there it is. Yeah, and here it comes. We've got uh, 80 and 80 coming up. I think he just did one of his two. Uh, feather arrows? Yeah, I think he wanted to do two. <laughs> and here come them both. 80 and 80. Two devolution. Sure, it's going to put the Decidueye into Kettler's hand, but it's going to knock out the two Dark Tricks below them. Yeah, and that is a big swing in the game. A two prize swing, two Decidueye GX gone, and most importantly, all of the energy gone. So Igor perhaps making uh, his stand here in game number two. He has the clear advantage, more Decidueye GX in play, fewer prize cards, more energy in play, and the constant threat of that Espeon EX devolving his uh, low HP Pokemon. It's definitely a uh, tough thing to deal with. On Kettler's end, I felt like one of the biggest things that he was struggling with was energy attachments, and I feel like throwing Shaman EX up is just showing that he's going to be behind an energy yet again, likely trying to go for a Sky Return. How will John Kettler respond here? He needs to find some way to deal with all the threats on Igor Costa's board. Uh, if he has Lysander, perhaps he could go after that Decidueye GX with all the energy on it, as he's now powered up his Lugia EX. Olympia. But looks like just going for the Olympia and uh, perhaps trying to get rid of this Espeon EX before it can do more damage. So one way to move the Shaman. I'm sure he wishes he had something like a Float Stone instead, so he could use a separate supporter. And is that it? Are we just going to see an arrow ball here on the Espeon after one Feather Arrow? Yeah, it looks like Feather Arrow going on to the bench. Decidueye GX and Arrow Ball for 80 to the active Espeon EX. And Igor looks to be in control here. Now the Espeon EX not really doing anything at this point. There's no damage on any of John's Pokemon, so devolving them is pretty much a waste. But we do see, oh, Lysander on to Decidueye GX, so... Igor looking to make a big play here. I wonder if he's just going to Razor Leaf hit for 110 or 120 damage with the Razor Leaf, or if he'll perhaps go for something like a Flying Flip and try to get a knockout that way. It looks like he's applying one Feather Arrow onto the Benched Gloom. I think he wanted to do both. This has happened yeah. a couple times now. Okay, so he's got both on the Gloom. Yeah, just trying to apply a ton of damage here to the Decidueye in the active what? spot. You gotta speak really loud. Oh, discard pile. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah it's a two-hit like knockout. He can raise the leaf for 120 twice. He can kind of see where he's going. If uh, that Gloom doesn't evolve into Vile Plume next turn, he can just do the same thing to Gloom, knock it out. It only has 80 HP, uh, and finish off the active with the raise the leaf and collect all three prize cards in one turn. So I'm trying to trying to look at damage. Yeah, I wonder, Kettler could, if he had a way to retreat his active, yeah. he could knock out this, uh, I don't know, I'm actually, I'm trying to do the math. So if he hits for 150 <laughs> with Lugia, I actually don't even think that's enough, even with the Feather Arrow. No, maybe 10 short. You'd need two Feather Arrows and a Lugia attack and a way to move out of the active spot. I don't see it all happening, but I'm not quite sure what's in his hand. And of course, John does not play versus Seeker. Actually, neither player does play Versus Seeker. Go figure. Huh. <laughs> Even Igor with no Vile Plume doesn't play Versus Seeker. We usually see four of that in every deck. Uh, John doesn't play it because he plays Vile Plume, but 
That's kind of weird. Yeah, he does only run nine total supporters, so he doesn't have as many targets, but it still would be a powerful card. Yeah. I mean, he can always hollow hunt GX when he needs to, and he has lots of Shaman EX, so perhaps not always necessary. So here we see Tapu Lele doing a Wonder Tag. Wonder what supporter Kettler could grab from here. Yeah, nothing seems like a great option. Looks like he's pulling out N, but he needs a float stone this turn to get this Decidueye GX out of the active spot. Otherwise, it's going to be Razor Leaf, Knockout, and Igor. It will be well on his way to a Game 2 victory, tying up this series. And I think John also wants a Vile Plume here. I think he's going to Sycamore. Oh, man, that is a big one. Okay. And, uh, yeah, Igor says, give me that. I need to see what you've lost. <laughs> Kettler's End figures that's his best chance, thin the deck as much as possible, find the pieces that he needs. It looks like he's got a lot to work with, things like Trainer's Mail, Shaman to draw even more cards if he needs to. I think the Vile Plume is going to be pretty big here. Otherwise, it, and a way to move out of the active spot. Yeah. Trying to think if there's any other cool plays he could set up, but... It does feel like this game is slipping yeah. away a little bit. Uh, John could, I don't know, he needs Floatstone to get out of there. I mean, if, if he doesn't, he'll just get his Decidueye GX knocked out by Razor Leaf. Uh, and then four more damage counters will go on to even the Vile Plume. And then on the next turn, Igor would just Miraculous Shine, knock out Gloom, and uh, take the game. So you can see many lines to victory for Igor. But where are they for John? I don't really see them. So for Igor... Looks like he's ultra balling. He was counting how many cards are left in his deck, which signifies to me that he's considering following up that up with another Shaman. Whatever he's looking for, he's desperate enough to look for it right now. Uh, I'm actually not sure if there is a Shaman left in the deck. I think he uh, has one in his hand. He does have Vile Plume, though. Um, so that could be one way to remove that win condition from Igor, at least for a portion. Yeah, and John trying to decide, does he want to take Vile Plume with this Ultra Ball? If he does, he won't want to play it till after he's a setup because he wants to get the float stone and decides, no, I'm not going to take Vile Plume. I want to draw an extra card off of setup and improve my odds. So just doing the Ultra Ball just to thin his hands so he can draw more cards later. Oh, he actually hey, there's it's... float stone. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the sequencing there might be a little it. off if you're not going to take Vile Plume. It looked like John was undecided, but... Uh, if you know you're not going to play Ultra Ball, you might as well play the Trainer's Mail first. Yeah, I, I always like to play it first. And here we go. Set up here. Going to get four additional cards. Has a double colorless energy onto the Lugia. Here's the thing. He doesn't get the knockout, but he does that thing where he basically ensures a knockout on the next turn if a Decidueye lives. Yeah, that's the big question. Will Igor have Lysander to uh, oh, wait. support does, that plan? Does he even have the Vile Plume? I don't think so. If he doesn't have the Vile Plume, he just immediately loses to a Lysander. Uh, you see triple prizes come out. And we just got word that Tord Reklev, our player from Norway, has defeated Sam Chen and will move on to the finals. So we have our first finals competitor. Oh, wow. Uh, so we've got at least one international competitor uh, trying to take away the North American home turf title. That's right. Uh, only one international championship has been won by a person from their region so far, and that was the Latin American international championship. So uh, Tord trying to continue the trend of other people invading um, other regions. And so here we've got yeah, the double-double on Lugia. Just short here, could hit for, let's see, he's got the 150. We don't know where the Feather Arrow is going to go. And Keller not even able to evolve to the Vile Plume. I wonder if it, uh, this all could have been resolved if he just played the... Well, we don't know it was on the top of his deck at the time, but if he plays the Trainer's Mail first and then finds Float Stone, yep. um, he can drop it down first and then go ahead and grab the Vile Plume. Yeah, the way it stands now, if Igor has Lysander in hand, I think he's going to win this game. Double Feather Arrow knocking out Gloom. Lysander onto Decidueye GX and Razor Leaf for the win. Does he have that game-winning Lysander to play? So Igor on the draw. I don't know if he has it. He can even fish it out of the prizes because he can do the two feather arrow first. I feel like yeah. if he had it, he'd play it right away. And if he doesn't, he's actually in a terrible situation. John Kettler can simply 
Feather Arrow, knock out the active, and then Lysander onto that Espeon EX and knock it out with Lugia EX, taking a four prize turn and winning the series. Maybe he could go on to the finals. This is a big, big turn for Igor. Maybe he's on to something with this Lugia thing. <laughs> like I mentioned, uh, he does like attaching both double colorless and doing a deep hurricane every now and then. It's weird, but 150 damage is a pretty nice output that nothing else in his deck can really do. And I have to think Igor is kicking himself for benching that Tapu Koko earlier in the game. He was debating even putting it down as well. Uh, if he had a bench spot here, something like Tapu Lele GX could search for a Lysander in this situation, but his bench has just been clogged the entire time with things he really doesn't want there. And now he's got to ask himself, do I have any Lysander in my prize cards? Uh, if I knock out Gloom with these Feather Arrows, can I possibly get it? Let's check out his prize cards. What is he going to draw? Perhaps, uh, maybe Lysander's in there? Yeah, we see Feather Arrow 1. I think actually Feather Arrow 1. Like, he hasn't done them both again. Yeah. Just sort of delaying the inevitable. I think he's going to have to do the second and fish his prizes. Can we see uh, Igor's prizes? Is there a Lysander in there? Nope. Oh, there is not. Wow. Does he have any way to get nope, it? In those, his are, hand? those are John's prize cards. Oh, you're right. Yeah, those, those were four. We need to see the one with three prize cards left. And also, no. No, he Shaman gets... Shaman and no way to... Again, use it. no bench space to play down that Shaman EX. John Kettler could be on the way to the finals if he has that Lysander in his hand. The, the big boss, Lysander has been deciding games here at the international championships. Whichever player is fortunate enough to have it at the right times has been the victor more often than not. Yeah, I think we just see it happening so much more consistently to close games because players have access to cards like the Tapu Lele now. It's just uh, pulling up the bench can often just give you the ideal attacker. Instead of just attacking your opponent's active position, having access to all the Pokemon on their field to grab the prizes that you want are huge. One play Igor could have done was attach to Espeon EX, retreat and use Miraculous Shine to get rid of the Decidueye GX. Then he wouldn't have been in that danger of the four prize turn. I don't know how many double colorless energy he had left. Maybe that wasn't a reasonable play, but that was something he could have done. Yeah, uh, then you sort of forced Cutler to need both Lysander and an entire replacement Decidueye line. But now that he's played a supporter and has not attached an energy to Espeon, I think that Decidueye survives to the next turn if there is one. Yikes, this is coming down to the wire. I think it's going to basically come down to does John have Lysander in his hand? If not, Igor might take game number two, but if John has it, I think that's it, and he's going to be our second finalist here at the International Championships. Man, this is down to the wire. Both games, we have not seen a vile plume from John Kettler, but he has put himself in advantageous positions time after time. Now, I see at least one Lysander in John Kettler's discard pile. He does not run versus Seeker. I'm not sure if the second one is in there or not. And we know it isn't in his prize cards. <laughs> yeah. This is very tense. Which player will come out on top? Igor is just fighting to stay alive to force a game three. And I think he's trying to figure out what gives me my best chance to win. We're going to see Hollow Hunt GX. So just basically setting himself up, guaranteeing that he's going to have what he needs to win on the next turn. But does Keller have what he needs to win right now? That's the question. Does John Keller have the Lysander that will send him into the finals? If not, Igor Costa is giving himself the cards to win on the next turn. So there we see not just one Lysander, but two. Maybe trying to prevent himself from some kind of end shenanigan. Here we go. Kettler draws. What does he have? There we go. Feather arrow to the active. Knocking out Decidueye GX. Does he have the Lysander in hand to close out this series? Moving on to the finals. And here we see. I see a lot of Forest of Giant Plants and a lot of energy. I don't think he has it either. Oh, my goodness. Um, Igor really went all in on this Hollow Hunt GX. What he's trying to do is Feather Arrow two damage counters onto Shaman EX, Lysander it out, and slap a Choice Band onto Tapu Koko so he can flying flip for 100 and win the game. If John is able to get Vile Plume into play, he can thwart that plan and perhaps still win this. I wonder. It just seemed like he didn't have anything other than energy and stadiums. 
If he so, does, he does have yeah. one revitalizer. Okay, so that could be very valuable. Man, still anybody's game. I can't believe nobody's won yet. <laughs> it's been so close. It's just, this is crazy. Um, there's so few energy uh, on the board. Just three energy cards Sorry. total. Just tough. And John has to know if he cannot disrupt Igor at all, it is game over. He saw exactly what went into Igor's hand. He knows he has to be aware of what Igor's plan is going to be. But can he stop it? Here comes Revitalizer grabbing pieces for another Decidueye, it looks like. Yeah, that is not Vileplume. Does he have an N, perhaps, to disrupt Igor's plans? Yeah, I'm trying to think. He has not played a supporter card so far, correct? Correct. So here we see Force Giant Plants coming down. I guess another Decidueye coming down. Does he have any way to stop Igor from winning the game with this flying flip choice band combination? I'll go ahead and oh man, just the... such a tense situation. There's so much on the line here in the top four of the international championships. Your chance to be crowned champion the is in the wings here. Oh my goodness, we see another feather arrow. I don't think John has it. I think we might see a game three. Yeah, I'm trying to think what his line of reasoning is right now. What this is going to do to prevent him from losing on this next turn. Attach. Another energy attachment on the Lukia. Do we see an N, a Lysander, anything oh, to stop no, Igor Costa from winning the game? And no! Oh. Here we go. Igor is going to promote this Tapu Koko. He's got Lysander. He's got Choice Band. We see <laughs> Flying Flip. Good game. And we are moving on to game number three. Man, how, how anxious do you think you are if you're Igor? <laughs> Ain't just waiting. Kettler's doing things like grabbing a Decidueye. Got to be thoughts flying through your mind. Like, what on earth is he going to do? Why Decidueye? What's happening? <laughs> but in the end, was not able to either N or Lysander, the two crucial supporters that would have saved him there. It was a great fought battle both ways, but it looks like we're moving to game three. Yeah, the only thing that must have been running through Igor's head was, please give me a turn. Please give me a turn. <laughs> and when he got his turn, he didn't even draw his card. He just goes, all right, here we go. Here's all the stuff I got. Let's go to game three. So players shuffling up for game number three. This last game will decide who goes to the finals to face Torrid Reklev tomorrow to crown our first ever North American international champion. Josh, at this point, we have John Keller finally going first in the matchup. Do you think he'll be able to take the win and finish off this series? You know, uh, I know he definitely wants to be playing for that prize lead to try and take over as soon as possible. I feel like now is the time for Vileplume. We have not seen a Vileplume once <laughs> in either game. We yeah. saw it like almost played at one point. It was certainly in his hand. It was just like discarded. Never really picked up off of a revitalizer. Yeah, even on that very last turn yeah. of the game, if he had gotten Vileplume out, I think he wins. And uh, I just feel like if you're able to set up, then drop Vileplume, and your opponent doesn't have that same luxury, it's just so hard to deal with. That said, we do see a fantastic starter in Igor's end. Uh, if he is met with Vileplume, and that's Tapu Koko. Here we go. For the first Entry. time ever, no Rowlet in John Kettler's prize cards. He will have all four to play with. He's at maximum potential. <laughs> Saved it all for this last game. Once again, we see Lugia facing off against Tepu Koko. It's a bit of an awkward matchup because Lugio has to deal with the weakness. Bill, I'm gonna go back in. Yeah, will John Kettler be able to get that turn one vile plume? That is going to be a big, big change in this matchup. If he is able to turn off Igor's item cards before he gets a chance to even play, but he's got a long way to go. You know, you need the Oddish, the Gloom, the Vileplume, and the Forest of Giant Plants, but a pretty good sign here. Ultra Balling away two supporter cards. His hand has to be fairly strong if he's willing to do that. Now, typically, this deck is set up so that you can get as many uh, of your Pokemon evolved in the first turn. A turn one Vileplume is not uncommon. However, having messed with this deck several times, it does fizzle occasion occasionally. Oh, yeah. There are plenty of times where you're like, all right, Shaman EX set up for five. Here we go. Pass. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's like multiple forest of plants, yeah. a supporter, and you've already played your supporter. There are like three forest of giant plants, two energy. You're just like, uh. <laughs> it's not your, perfect. Your turn. <laughs> 
But John so far has had pretty reasonable starts in both games. Now game number three, we'll see if the same is true. Uh, he hasn't really had any of those clunky starting hands. He's been able to get a turn one to Sidui GX in the first two games. Will that be true for game number three as well? Looks like he's opting to go for the Rowlet first, knowing that the Decidueye certainly is very important with the amount of pressure that it can bring. Yeah, John does this in a lot of different matchups. Decidueye GX is, in a lot of ways, more important than the Vileplume. But, ooh, uh, empty-handed Professor Sycamore, after playing Forest of Giant Plants, can John put the pieces together and get oh. that turn one Vileplume? There's the turn one Decidueye, anyways. Oh, my goodness. But does he have any more to play with? I see a lot of... Pokemon in his hand. There's Gloom. Oh boy, if you're Igor, you cannot be happy to see Gloom. Vileplume is one step oh. away. I don't think he has anything else, though. No other hand. way, no access to Shaman. He can search for a supporter, but he's already played his supporter for the turn. Igor's going to have a turn of items. All right, here we go. And Igor slamming down his Decidueye GX right away, thanks to Forest of Giant Plants. We're going to have a close game here. Yeah, a huge thing here is things, even like uh, just getting a choice band down, it oh, drastically no. changes the amount of damage you can do. Oh, boy. Igor's hand is terrible. Oh, he has to boy. pass. That was it? Not even an energy to attack with. Not like this. <laughs> we were talking about, oh, wow, Kettler's setup can fizzle, but we didn't even realize how bad Igor's hand was. Kettler's just going to keep trucking along, too. He's got the Professor Sycamore drawing a fresh hand of seven cards. If he can get the Vile Plume out, he's going to put the clamps on this game, and I don't think he's going to look back. He's going to be the one heading to the finals. Ultra Ball in hand, so it's basically guaranteed. The only other thing I can think of that he would love to have is Float Stone down. It can be scary to be pulled up on Lysander and stuck there, but otherwise, Igor has revealed that he has just about nothing to work with. I think Kettler's going full steam ahead for it. Unfortunate in this final deciding game, Igor battled all the way back in game number two. That uh, he is just unable to muster up anything. No supporter card, no ultra ball. He even had opportunities, an opportunity to play item cards. Didn't have ultra ball, didn't have trainer's mail. Wow, it's a rare occurrence to have a completely unplayable hand. Even a level ball would have gotten him an Alolan Vulpix to beacon for some Pokemon, but right, uh, absolutely yep. nothing. Tepacoco has free retreat, so you could even have that available to him. Uh, we see Kettler going for the double Decidueye once again, using his Ultra Ball first and then the Trainer's Mail. We'll see what he grabs here. Fail? Nothing. A whole lot of nothing. He had a Lysander in there that he could have taken, which signifies to me that he has access to a Shaman to draw more cards. Yeah, he definitely has Shaman EX Shaman in hand five. to set up for, it looks like, five additional five. cards. Five. And at this point, I'm, I just don't know how Igor is going to do anything in this game. There are two Decidueye GX on the board for John already. Field blower taking that away just in case. And he's actually just going to arrow ball, it looks like. Oh, those are the feather arrows and uh, the arrow ball as the follow-up. Does Igor draw anything for his turn? I think he drew Espeon. Oh, no. Wow. Another feather arrow pass? That's so sad. Doesn't even have the double, and he's even holding the choice band, too. The only saving grace for him is he will at least be able to survive one more turn. There's nothing in John's deck that can really do 240 damage in one attack, but... And then he can do the saddest rescue stretcher of all time to survive another turn. Yeah, but, man, just not a great situation for Igor Costa. He's come so close to winning major events this season, time after time at regional championships, having one more opportunity at the international championships. But this just might not be his weekend, but it might be the weekend of John Kettler with his Decidueye Vileplume deck getting his big victory. I was going to say, you've got to wonder, at what point does Kettler just say, okay, I'm getting the Vileplume now. He's got two Decidueye out. He has uh, plenty of energy on Lugia. He could even grab another knockout right now before he even attacks. Yes, and there is Vileplume. No more item cards for Igor Costa. Feather Arrow taking down Tapu Koko. We're going to see Arrow Ball. Man, I just don't know if Igor can find a way out. There's Arrow Ball, or sorry, Feather Arrow. Oh, double colorless energy. 
No stadium to knock down, but still uh, hitting pretty heavily. Uh, same either way, and that's it. It's over. That's it. John Kedler is moving on to the finals with this Decidui Vileplume deck. He will be taking on Tord Reklev tomorrow morning in the finals. Wow. He I, could be our first international champion. That is incredible. Uh, after such a tight uh, series of games, just sort of running into one of those few where you get extremely lucky, just stomp over your opponent, and uh, that's going to earn him a finals berth. Yeah. We're going to and see the two big titans, I feel like, of this year's competition, um, the Decidui deck and then the new titan, the uh, Garboder deck, facing off. And you can see great sportsmanship from Igor. He's always uh, a, a great competitor, even in defeat, smiling, and uh, as you saw, a little gesture there. He signed the match slip and he circled win for John Kettler and handed it to his opponent, congratulating him. Ha, that was uh, very nice of him to do. And I think uh, win or lose, Igor has certainly cemented himself. We said this several times, but he just continues to add to a resume that proves that he is one of the greatest players of all time. I think many would even start considering him in the top five of all time. Absolutely.